Welcome back. One of the world's most famous prayers could get a makeover. Uh, Pope Francis calling for a new translation of the Lord's Prayer. Now, he says that the line, lead us not into temptation, suggests God is the one who causes people to sin. Instead, he wants to use the French translation, do not let us fall into, tempta into temptation, which would shift blame to mankind. So what do you think? Should the Lord's Prayer be changed? Weigh in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on this one. And he survived the worst mass shooting in Texas history, and now you can help his Christmas wish come true. Five-year-old Rylan Ward is still in the hospital after being shot while in a church in Sutherland Springs last month. He lost his mother, he lost his two sisters, his family's asking people to send Christmas cards with pictures of pets or donations to help buy him a go-kart. If you want to send Rylan a little holiday cheer, send those cards to the address on your screen. Governor Greg Abbott even tweeting this, let's show this young man some Texas size love. He definitely deserves a good Christmas. Well, that wraps up our show for this Friday. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday. Fox and Friends First continues right now. Bye-bye. It is Friday, December 8th. The Fox News alert, California exploding like a tinderbox. Brand new fires igniting, destroying neighborhoods and leaving nothing but chimneys still standing. We're live on the ground where the evacuation just widened. I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate on the line fighting the out of control infernos that's just seemed to be getting worse. Will Carr is live in Ventura where the evacuation zone just widened. Good morning, Will. Good morning, guys. Six fires continue to burn across Southern California. It's continued to be dangerous conditions. You can see the fires once again bearing down on us, and we've been on the front lines. Take a look at what we've been seeing. These flames have raced down this hillside in just the past couple of minutes. They're being fanned by the fierce winds we've had throughout the course of Почему закваска Vivo ищет молоко? Потому что верит, что им суждено быть вместе, и однажды они обязательно встретятся. Ведь когда они соединяются, на свет рождается чудесный йогурт, свежий и натуральный, содержит живые полезные бактерии. Закваска Vivo и молоко. Так рождается настоящий йогурт. Both day and night trying to protect these communities and residents we've spoken with say they're thankful. We're very, very grateful for, My last for the fire department for, and all the fire departments from up and down the state and out of state. They're all here helping us. We never dreamt it would be back here again. We thought we were safe last night. And check out this dramatic video race ranchers racing to save dozens of horses and that just shows how quickly things can get out of control here. What happens is the Santa Ana winds push embers down the road. They create spot fires that are that break out so fast that the firefighters can't get there. So it takes a while to get the crews in and in the meantime, these ranchers and the people on the ground have to do everything they can to save both their lives and their properties. Guys, back to you. Well, definitely a frightening situation out there. And stay safe as you cover this for us. We thank you. Thanks, Will. Two students shot and killed by a classmate at a New Mexico high school. Staff at Aztec High School immediately locking down at the building as shots rang out. This video showing some students crouching down inside locked classrooms. Police arriving within minutes, shattering windows to get inside. Authorities say the staff's quick thinking likely saved many lives. The suspect dying from a gunshot wound, but at this point it's unclear if he shot himself or if police did. The motive is unknown. An accused serial killer indicted by a grand jury now facing four counts of premeditated murder. Howell Donaldson III allegedly shot and killed four people over six weeks in a Tampa neighborhood. His parents could be held in contempt of court if they don't start speaking with investigators. Earlier, criminal defense attorney Robert Bianchi said they could know critical information. So they want to find out from these parents, what's his mental health? What was he going through at the time? Are there mitigating factors that would justify not imposing the death penalty? 
Bianchi believes the parents will change their minds and cooperate with investigators. Four minutes after the hour now, Senator Al Franken announcing plans to step down following mounting allegations of sexual misconduct. But he didn't apologize to his accusers or constituents. Instead, he took a parting shot at our commander in chief. Garrett Tenney is live in Washington, D.C. with the latest on that. Garrett. Todd and Jillian, good morning to you. Yeah, more than a half dozen women have now come forward with allegations of sexual misconduct by Al Franken, but those allegations are not the reason that he's stepping down. Yesterday on the Senate floor, the Minnesota senator said he's only resigning because he would not be able to effectively represent Minnesota while going through a Senate ethics investigation. Franken then went on to describe himself as an advocate and a champion of women during his time in Congress. But when it comes to victims of sexual harassment and assault, as well as the allegations against him, he said this. All women deserve to be heard and their experiences taken seriously. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. In his 11-minute speech, Franken maintained he has never done anything to dishonor the Senate. And before wrapping up, the once rising star of the Democratic Party took some parting shots at the president and Republican Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore. I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. And after Franken's resignation, Republican Congressman Trent Franks announced his own resignation following complaints from two of his staff members with whom he discussed becoming a surrogate for him and his wife. In a statement, Franks em emphasized he has never engaged in improper sexual advances, but added, however, I do want to take full and personal responsibility for the ways I have broached a topic that unbeknownst to me until very recently made certain individuals uncomfortable. As for Al Franken's Senate seat, the governor will be appointing someone to fill it until a special election is held November next year. This Penny. one Thank is you. interesting. It I, mean, is. I think we haven't heard the last of, of that Trent Franks situation. A lot of unanswered questions there. Absolutely. Garrett, thanks. First Representative John Conyers steps down, now Senator Al Franken. Yeah, with Democrats looking to win back the House and Senate in the upcoming elections, attorney Harmeet Dillon says they're cleaning house for a reason. I think that Al Franken is a, a human sacrifice on the altar of 2018 for the Democrats. And, you know, look at the leader of the pack, uh, Kristen Gillibrand, who last year was campaigning happily with Bill Clinton when it's expedient to throw the Clintons overboard, which they've done. Now they've done that as well. And so I think this whole Me Too movement has been enabled by the fact that the Democrats are no longer held back by the Clinton dynasty, because for all these years, everybody knew it was wrong what was happening, yet they couldn't say anything because the leaders of their party were the ones doing the offending and the demeaning and the shaming and the blaming and the all those bad things and so now it's a new day but I think they're going a little bit overboard here and I'm not sure Al Franken based on his comments today is yeah. truly with the program. President Trump welcoming congressional leaders from both sides of the aisle to play. Let's make a deal at the White House. And this time, top Democrats Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer both showed up. The high stakes meeting focusing on bridging a political span the size of the Grand Canyon. It's a well knit together group of people. And we hope that we're going to make some great progress for our country. We are here to make progress. We're here in the spirit of let's get it done. The meeting coming hours before the House and Senate passed a stopgap measure temporarily funding the government to avoid a shutdown. The Oscars Academy announcing a new code of conduct after expelling Harvey Weinstein. The code says in part, there is no place in the Academy for people who abuse their status, power or influence in a manner that violates standards of decency. Weinstein was kicked out after dozens of women accused him of sexual misconduct, sparking a rash of accusers to come forward against other Hollywood stars. A really sad story. Pittsburgh Steelers' Ryan Shazier may be taking a turn for the worse. The linebacker undergoing spinal stability, I cannot say that word, stabilization surgery days after being left motionless on the field following this collision. Take a look. Ryan Shazier, the leader of this Pittsburgh defense, is not getting up. 
A neurologist who consults with the NFL Players Association but hasn't treated him tells ESPN his condition is not good and he may not play football again. Todd, isn't that a horrific situation? Such a scary yeah. hit right there. You just see his arms kind of flail there. So yeah. frightening. We pray for him. Wish him the best. All right. An impromptu performance fit for a president. The touching moment, a World War II veteran breaks out into song as the president honors survivors of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Just remember Pearl Harbor and go on to victory. Yeah. Navy veteran Mickey Ganich sang the traditional song after President Trump said the signature battle cry. Trump went on to sign a presidential proclamation for National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, honoring the more than 2,300 heroes oh. who lost their lives. Incredible. If you've ever been out there, those who have know it is just a touching and moving yeah. experience. Uh, you will never forget if you go there, like we should never forget those who lost their Absolutely. lives. Absolutely. The head of the FBI grilled by Republicans as they call out anti-Trump bias inside the bureau. Almost anybody who grabbed a... Моторные масла Роснефть. Мотор sure your kids are staying out of trouble. This is one you don't want to miss. The drug dogs now for hire. And crashing the party, the Christopher Ray grilled by Republicans over bias concerns. The bureau boss defending the agency after revelations that a top agent ousted from special counsel Robert Mueller's team was behind two critical turning points in the Clinton and Russia investigations. I'm sure you're aware of the recent media reports indicating that Peter Strzok, who is a special agent at the FBI, changed the words grossly negligent to extremely careless in former director Comey's statement. Almost anybody who grabbed a thesaurus would say that gross negligence and extremely careless are pretty darn close to each other. Congressman Jim Jordan pressing the FBI director on Strzok's possible involvement with the anti-Trump dossier. My hunch is it has something to do with the dossier. Director did Peter Strzok help produce and present the application to the FISA court to secure a warrant to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign. Uh, Congressman, I'm not prepared to discuss anything about uh, a FISA process. But wait, there's more. As fireworks erupt over the FBI, Fox News has learned a separate DOJ senior official, Bruce Orr, has been demoted after evidence surfaced of his contact with Fusion GPS. You'll recall that is the research firm behind the anti-Trump dossier. An investigation mm. is now underway. More to come. And after these political oustings, House Judiciary Committee member Jim Jordan appearing on Fox News to call out the FBI and their past help to political campaigns. And thank goodness that the Speaker and Devin Nunes and the Intel Committee and Chairman Goodlatte were all pushing, but we need that information because each day, we just heard about Mr. Orr, we know about Peter Strzok, who we talked about in the committee today. Each and every day, something new comes out which reinforces this belief that you had the FBI working with the Clinton campaign to go after the other party's nominee. That is not supposed to happen in this great country. It is not supposed to work that way. You had this dossier, which was, you know, Clinton campaign paying Fusion GPS, paying Christopher Steele, paying Russians for a bunch of baloney that they turn into an intelligence document, take it to the court to get a warrant to spy on Americans, really? And potentially Christopher Steele was also, it's been reported, paid by the FBI, the MI6 agent who collected the information. So all this goes on and and Peter Strzok gets dismissed from the Mueller team, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, ran the Russian investigation. It all starts to just point to this idea that the government was working with one major political party to go after the other party's nominee, and that is not fair to Mr. Trump. President Trump, that's not fair to, it's just not how it's supposed to work. The DOJ now in the process of reviewing and handing over Peter Strzok's text messages. 10,000 of them in all. It's going to take a while to get through those. Yes, it is. It is 17 minutes after the hour. The United Nations Security Council calling an emergency meeting for this morning as fiery protests explode on the Gaza Strip after President Trump announces a change to Israel's capital. We're live on the ground in Jerusalem. And a high school student on the debate team suspended for... <laughs> 
Wait for this, guys. You ready? What? Debating. No. Wait until you hear this when Fox <laughs> and Friends first returns on a, what morning? Friday. A Friday morning. <laughs> For now, get this. A Missouri high school under fire after suspending a student on the debate team for debating a Muslim student. Now, according to the college fix, Alex Lonsdale was critical about Islamic extremism but made no personal attacks. He says the other student claimed that he called all Muslims terrorists. Now, in a letter, the school writing, quote, it is our hope that this assignment will serve as a corrective disciplinary action. Lonsdale said he was not given a chance to appeal. Both students are reportedly experienced members of the school's debate team, ranked second in the nation. Resistance 101 revoked. A professor at Kutztown University in Pennsylvania who originally offered extra credit for students to attend an anti-GOP tax plan protest on campus now backing down. The professor retracting her call due to complaints and concerns on social media. That rally still going on as planned though with only 10 students showing up. Jillian and an amazing jacket. Over to you. Oh, yes. Wait a second for that. An underwater love story is swimming into theaters this week. It's a new take on an old tale where even a fish out of water can find his soulmate. But is it worth your box office bucks? Fox News contributor Kevin McCarthy is here <laughs> live Hello. in studio with this amazing jacket hey, and tie. It's time for Merry Christmas. So why not be wearing this? <laughs> I yeah. was going to say, what did we do to deserve this? I have three or four of these suits, actually. <laughs> this is just the one I chose to wear today. Good morning to you, Jill. Good morning. Good okay, you. so tell us about The Shape of Water. Personally, yeah. I, I saw the trailer and I'm like, I'm not sure I fully understand this. It's incredible. Guillermo del Toro directed this movie, who directed Pan's mm -hmm. Labyrinth and Hellboy and Pacific Rim. The idea here is it takes place in 1960s Baltimore. Uh, a woman named, uh, played by Sally Hawkins works in a government laboratory. She works in the custodial staff, and they bring in this asset, this sea creature to experiment <laughs> on there. And she they falls fa in love. They fall in love. I, and listen, I know it sounds crazy. How do you fall in love with a sea creature? I Ironically, it's one of the most grounded emotionally uh, films I've seen this year. And the asset, the creature is played by a gentleman named Doug Jones. So 90% of his body is in full prosthetics. It's insane how they do it. Now, here's the cool thing. So this movie wasn't made for a lot of money, but it looks like a massive budget okay. film. It does. And Del Toro did this incredibly cool old school technique where a lot of the scenes that take place underwater were actually not underwater oh, at really? all. Here's how they did this. Wow. This is unbelievable. Watch this. This is a relatively small budget. It looks like a $100 million film. Yeah, we did 19.5, and what we did is we knew that the opening scene is such an operatic theatrical scene. One shot, right? One shot, and we needed to make you feel you were underwater. So what we use is a very old theatrical technique called dry for wet. We fill the stage with smoke. We shoot at a high speed. Uh, we put everything on wires, actors, props, furniture, Everything is on wires, and then uh, you shoot it with uh, fans, hitting the clothes and the fabric, so it moves like it's underwater, and it looks like it's underwater. And then the actors pantomime that they're underwater, and you add bubbles digitally at the very end. Yeah. That blew my mind. Yeah. I mean, the fact that those these, the actors are hanging on these wires and they're essentially pantomiming, it's very, very cool, but the movie's incredible. I gave it a 4.5 okay. out of 5. Sally Hawkins is amazing. She actually does a great honor to the uh, to the American Sign Language community. Yes. Uh, her character's mute, and that's how she communicates with the sea creature through sign language. 4.5 out of 5, one of okay. the best movies of the year. You will definitely see it up for a lot of Academy Sounds Awards. Sounds good. And how about Darkest Hour? Oh, what do you give this? Gary Old. <laughs> the best actor working today. He's amazing. He plays Winston Churchill. It's during the time when he became prime minister. Uh, he takes over, and the, the idea of the turning point of World War II, specifically in that particular uh, time of frame, mm -hmm. was Dunkirk. And the idea of what he did with that. Gary Oldman is unbelievable in this role. He will win the Academy Award this year, even though I think Andy Serkis deserves it for War for the Planet okay. of the Apes. But Gary Oldman's phenomenal. I gave the movie a four out of five. He's better than the overall film, but Joe Wright did a great job with the cinematography, a four out of five for that. Those are two films, by the way, they're in platform release, meaning that they're in limited release. They will expand throughout the month okay. of December. So if it's not in your city yet, you'll see it And soon. I think for your suit, we give you a five out of five. What it. do you think, Todd? Uh, five out of five? Oh, five out, six it. out of five. It's amazing. I'm a 33-year-old grown man wearing this on national television. Thank I love you very it. much. <laughs> Todd, over to you. Jillian in the jacket, thank you. Time now, 25 minutes after the hour. The same people who have been pulling the strings in the 
Hillary Clinton and Russia investigations may have also tainted the Benghazi probe. Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis leading the charge to dig deeper. He joins us live next. And lead us not into mistranslation. Pope Francis wants to alter a line in the Lord's Prayer. After 39 years, I finally know it. Your comments are pouring in on this one. Don't go anywhere as Fox and Friends First continues. Calling for an emergency meeting in just hours as Palestinian protesters violently clash with Israeli troops for a day of rage. This all on the heels of President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Connor Powell joins us live from Lionsgate in Old Jerusalem with the very latest. Good morning, Connor. Yeah, good morning, guys. Well, things so far are peaceful this morning, a lot like they were yesterday. The afternoon prayers have just let out here at the Lions Gate at uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque here in Jerusalem's old city. The question now is what happens next? Yesterday, about this time, was when we began to see some violent clashes between Israeli security and Palestinians, uh, particularly in the West Bank in places like Bethlehem and in Ramallah. So far, things here in Jerusalem are fairly calm, but that doesn't mean that they will stay that way. There is a heavy security presence, and Palestinians are extremely angry with President Trump's unilateral decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Now, uh, yesterday, more than 100 Palestinians were injured in these clashes, primarily at checkpoints in and out of Palestinian uh, villages in the West Bank. Uh, today, there is a lot of focus on Jerusalem, on the old city area, but there is this heavy security presence right now, and things, as I said, do seem very calm, but later this morning, the United Nations Security Council will be hosting an emergency meeting called by some of America's strongest allies, the UK, France, Egypt, have all called for this meeting at the UN to discuss President Trump's decision. Needless to say, it's not only the Palestinians that are very angry and concerned about this decision. So some of America's closest allies are as well, Jillian and Todd. All right, Connor Powell, thank you. A possible new bombshell in the Benghazi probe. Yeah, in a closed door interview, retired FBI supervisor now alleging that Deputy Director Andrew McCabe instructed him mm. to not call the attack an act of terror. So does this all speak to the issue of political bias against the agency? Big question. Everyone wants the answer. Here now to weigh in is the congressman who interviewed that agent, Ron DeSantis. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. We really appreciate it. Can you tell us what went into that conversation you had on Wednesday? Well, this was someone who was very experienced agent, and um, he thought at the time during the Benghazi and the aftermath of the Benghazi attack that it was odd that that instruction was coming down because they had identified within 48 hours that they could tell through their use of different tools that they have that this was a pre-planned terrorist attack, and yet you have this order coming down saying, do not refer to it, do not refer to it as terrorism. That was consistent at the time with Hillary and Obama and what they were saying, but now now, the reason why I wanted to, to talk about this now is because you have all these other data points that have been bubbling up. And he said, you know, I wasn't sure the reason for it now, but, but looking at it, I'm really concerned that this was part of a larger political bias problem within the Bureau. Hmm. So when people exhibit certain things, I mean, you can vote for whoever you want. You can listen to Sean Hannity or you can watch uh, liberal uh, news. But if your actions are then not really explicable other than that, that's kind of the problem and so that's what he saw. To Representative DeSantis, there are also a number of connections between Mr. McCabe and the Clintons. Why don't you go into a little bit of detail on that to the extent that you can? Well, I mean, his, uh, his wife was a, a state Senate candidate in Virginia, uh, was supported heavily by Terry McAuliffe. I mean, you're talking about $700,000 uh, worth of support. And, and of course, McAuliffe is very, very close and has been for years with the Clinton family. Can you talk to us a little bit about why, in your opinion, the Benghazi attack wouldn't be called terrorism? Well, the agent's opinion was, look, there are some times when you may not know, but in this case, they were able to determine uh, that this was something that was motivated by terrorism. This was an al-Qaeda attack, effectively, and most of the agents at that time thought that that was a slam dunk assessment. So the issue is, is why would you then say not to call it 
what the evidence that you are currently gathering uh, would suggest that it is. Yeah. Where do you think this all leads, Representative DeSantis? Because we're in a situation now where the FBI has been literally called out on the carpet. Christopher Ray there yesterday defending the organization, but doing so with a little bit of a hand tie behind his back because he just started this new job, mm -hmm. quite frankly, moments ago. So where does this all lead? Well, I think Director Ray has a chance to. FBI actually took cognizance of that dossier. Uh, so why did they take cognizance of it? Did they pay Christopher Steele for the dossier? And then did they use the dossier to justify surveillance of Trump associates uh, with the FISA court? And you also got to remember this guy, Peter Strzok, who was relieved of duty from Mueller's investigation. Strzok was the lead agent on Hillary's uh, case, which was obviously questionable how that was handled. And then he was the lead agent on the so-called called Trump Russia case. Um, he, he had anti-Trump text, which, you know, is obviously something, but we don't even know if that was it. There may be more reasons why he was relieved of duty, but was he involved with Christopher Steele? Was he involved with the dossier? Did he bring that information to the FISA court to try to get surveillance? We need answers to those questions. Director Ray did not provide those yesterday. Um, Devin Nunes is pushing. I think the Speaker of the House is going to be talking with Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein. But clearly, we need to know whether the FBI was using effectively uh, opposition party research uh, to justify surveillance against a rival political candidate. That would be a clear misuse uh, of bureau resources. Well, and I think in all fairness, the public wants answers, too. They want the truth. We do have to run. But real quick, just a couple seconds here. When do you think we start to see accountability? Well, Rosenstein's coming to the Judiciary Committee next week, and if they haven't answered our concerns by then, I think it's going to be a rough day for them. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning, Congressman DeSantis. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Somebody referred to on Thank our you. air, uh, Peter Strzok, as the Forrest Gump in this situation, because he always seems to appear in all these various right. situations in, in Russia, in Clinton. So we'll see. Um, now to a Fox News alert. The governor of California asking for President Trump's help as raging wildfires intensify with no end in sight. More than 5,000 firefighters battling flames and fatigue to protect lives and homes. Among them, Los Angeles County firefighters and paramedic crew chief Michael Dubron. He joined us earlier calling the conditions historic. In my 20, almost seven years with the department, I've really never seen uh, conditions like this uh, where the winds are, are, are going so fast down these canyons and through these valleys uh, and not only such a sustained speed, but for a sustained period of time. Powerful hurricane force winds. On top of that, there is no rain in the forecast for at least the next week. Los Angeles causing the U.S. homeless population to rise for the first time in seven years. The county's homeless count topping 55,000, largely thanks to skyrocketing rent prices. But the U.S. now has 554,000 homeless people. That's 1% higher than 2016, according to a new federal report. If the Los Angeles region was excluded, the, home, the total homeless population would have dropped by 1.5% from last year. A brand new weapon in the fight against opioids. A canine trainer in Maryland just started a company to help parents figure out if their kids need help. For $150, you can hire a drug sniffing dog to search for drugs anywhere from private homes to businesses or even halfway houses. The owner saying it's a lot quicker and more thorough than a parent searching on their own. And when mom sticks the dog on you, you better watch out. All right, one of the world's most famous prayers could get a makeover. Pope Francis calling for a new translation of the Lord's Prayer, commonly known as Our Father. He says the line, quote, lead us not into temptation, suggests God is the one who causes people to sin. And instead, he wants to use the French translation, do not let us fall into temptation, which would shift the blame to mankind. As you might imagine, Jillian Mealy, your comments are pouring in on this one. Brian on Twitter says, it's not the Pope's prayer, so why does he think he has the authority to make any corrections? Interesting point there. Joanne writing on Facebook, all the problems in the world, and this Pope wants to change the Lord's prayer? Isn't there something else he could be doing to help mankind? 
But Robert disagrees on Twitter, saying, great and more accurate in my mind, why would God lead us into temptation? Let us know what you think. All right, so actually I'm looking at my Twitter feed and Scott Mitchell, who's watching us, sent me a photo of snow and he says, this is a very unusual thing for Southeast Texas. And take a look at your screen. Yeah, this is Texas. Nearly three inches falling from San Antonio to East Texas, including in College Station. That's no blanketing Texas A&M. Kyle Field, <laughs> the 12th man is under snow right there. A rare sight there on Twitter. Wow, I mean, we're getting pictures early this morning, Janestine, from people, people waking excited. up. I mean, this obviously they don't see this type of weather a lot in this area. I mean, I think Houston, the last measurable snowfall that they had was back in 2009 and so early in the season. But yes, Twitter is going to be filled with pictures of snow from the south. Look at it past 24 hours. I mean, South Texas, Houston, perhaps New Orleans. I mean, the Gulf Coast states getting snow. That is pretty amazing. Uh, you can see the past 24 hours. It, it's incredible. Uh, and I think most people are excited about it. Uh, people are urged to kind of stay off the roads if you can. Uh, it's not going to freeze on the roads because it's too warm on the actual pavement. And I'm not going to worry about black ice or anything like that. But I mean, this is winter weather and not, they're not really equipped uh, to clear it. So, I mean, it's a big deal. We're going we're gonna to see a lot of pictures on social media. There's the future radar because we're getting in on this as well as we head into the weekend for D.C., Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and Portland. Uh, this boundary is going to remain sort of hovered across the East Coast. So, I mean, there is a chance that we get maybe a little less than this, but there's also a chance that we get a little bit more than maybe one to three inches. So stay tuned. Snow is one of the hardest things to forecast, but I will tell you, we will get some snow here in the Northeast, which is also very awesome. exciting. It, it, it is December. Jimbo Fisher is probably like, dude, I left Florida State for Texas A&M. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but he has 75 million reasons <laughs> that the snow is not that big of a deal Don't there. Don't blame the Aggie weather country. person. Nope, it is not your fault. Okay. Thank you, Janice. You got it. Time now, 40 minutes after the hour. Tired of fake news, creepy ads, and internet trolls? No. Well, I, I love them all. You're all my favorite. <laughs> Kurt the Cyber Guy here with new apps you need to keep your kids safe online. I hope to represent the people of the United States, not the president. Oh, an Olympic slam from skier Lindsey Vaughn as she takes aim at President Trump. Social media not too happy and not letting her get away with it. And if you thought upside down trees were bad, oh gosh. wait until you see the new craze sweeping the internet this Christmas. What? Yep.